I love displaying things like users in little cards in a repeating group, as opposed to just displaying boring old rows in a repeating group. I'm going to demonstrate how to create these cards and also make sure that they are responsive right down to mobile size. Let's get started. So at the moment, I've created a repeating group just to demonstrate the variable that we're looking for. So here we have a picture, some text, a team, and some of these HTML chips to show a user skill list. We also have a search input and a custom dropdown that I've created to select a team. Let's now reformat this repeating group to be rectangular cards and then make it responsive down to mobile phone size. So I'm going to drag in a repeating group. Doesn't need to be too tall. Let's set the content type to user. Let's do a search for users. And we can sort by full name descending no. So then it starts at the letter A. Now the layout style I'm going to go for is full list and I'm doing full list. So it loads all of the records on page load, basically because my database only contains 10 rows, not very intensive. If it contained a lot more people, then I might actually create a taller repeating group, set it to maybe 10 rows and then have just vertical scroll, which means you only scroll within the box. You don't scroll down the page. But for this demonstration, full list is absolutely fine. Now I only actually want one row, but I do want four columns. I'm going to remove the style of the repeating group. because I will be styling this and showing you various options as we get through the tutorial. Okay, I need to make that a bit taller. Now we can go ahead and grab a group and drag the group within the cell. Don't, don't um, make it as tall as a cell. You want it to move it slightly and just create the shape that you're after. Once you've achieved that, just right click and go center horizontally and then center vertically. Okay, we do need a bit of space because these are four cards on a row. This is going to grow to three rows because we have 10 users. So four and then eight for the next row and then another two. So this spacing basically is the spacing between this row and the next row. So I'm going to increase that slightly. Okay, perfect. Now let's set the group user data to feed through. So this is user data and it's the current cells user. Uncheck make this element fixed width, basically because we want this to expand slightly and contract slightly because no two screens are the same size. Okay, I'm going to remove the style and I'm just going to add a light border. Make that six pixels in roundness and set to my usual border color of EB, EB, EB. And because of that, we don't need the separato anymore. Okay, fantastic. This is looking really good. Now, what information do we need in here? So I'm going to add a larger image, full name, job title, and then probably skills. I might leave marketing or the team name out for now. So let's grab a image element. Now we want a perfect square, okay? We want a perfect square, so 70 by 70, center horizontally, fixed width is good. And if it's 70 width by 70 height, we need at least half of that on the roundness to make it a perfect circle. So it can be more, so we can just say 70 and we're safe. But anything below 35 and it wouldn't be a perfect circle because it needs, it's talking about the roundness on all the four sides. So if this is 35, on the right hand side, if it's 35 at the bottom, 35 at the top, well that equals 70, okay? 
but I might change this width and height so I'm going to be safe and push it away above 70. From the top I'm going to make it 20 pixels. I have this checked here, show distances and hover. And that really helps when I want to make micro adjustments to see where things are on a page, such as the padding between the item and the top of the element. Okay, now to get the picture in, all we say that this is the current users or the parent group's users image. Now it's set to rescale. So this isn't going to work for us because in the database, as you can see, that's a rectangular image. Um, landscape, this is a portrait image, that's a square image. So the little trick I've learned over time is that if we set this to stretch, so stretch, take the image, push it all the way out by zooming in, in so it fills the circle. If we combine that with this more option here, we combine that and process it with Image IX, which is a third party image processing plugin that Bubble has included within the technology. If we process it with, process with Image IX, we can then resize to fit the dimensions by cropping. That's all we need to check. So Image IX is actually going to do some work on the API connection to actually find a person's face and as best they can zoom into that section and make a nice headshot crop. So you don't need any third party cropping image plugins in Bubble. Just use Image IX with, with stretch run mode rendering. Okay. Let's go ahead and see the results so far. Okay, this is looking really good. So it's because of the responsiveness on the group, I've let it actually grow in width. And now it's only needing two rows as opposed to three. But as you squeeze the page down, it will start dropping to the next row and creating more rows. Let's get some more information in here. Let's get the person's full name. Let's look at the styling for that. 16 is fine. I'm going to set it to my brand colors. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to set it to that black. Okay, set your own colors here. Let me make it 24 in height. Make sure it's centered. And now I'm going to just look at how I want it positioned in this particular box or group. And I want it starting at 30 X value. So I have 30 uh, pixels of padding on the left and I also want 30 on the right. So this has gone five pixels too far. So I'm going to set this width to 150, nice and clean. Now just please make sure that this is not set to fixed width, okay? We want things to be nice and fluid in this repeating group. So just set it, uncheck fixed width and set this to 20%. Okay, now we're going to grab the person's um, job title. So I'm just going to go copy paste on my keypad, micro adjust with the keypad, center horizontally. And just to make this text slightly different, let's select job title and then let's immediately set this to 13 pixels because we're going to tack on something called on the more option here called uppercase. So that capitalizes the whole word. Okay. And let's also change the color. So if we have nines across, this should actually make quite a nice difference when it comes to previewing this user card. Okay, looking good. I think it's too large though. So I'm going to bring this down a bit to 11. And I'm going to increase the full name to 17. Okay, 17 for the full name, 11 for the job title. I'm going to actually bring down this image slightly. So we've got 25 pixels of padding between the image and the top of this group. Okay, and just double check again that, un that 
Fixed width is unchecked and set to 20% there. We do need fixed width on the image. We don't want that to be responsive, but it will move and align center as this group expands and contracts. That text is fine and that text is fine. What else do we want? Why don't we now add the person's skills? And for this, we're not going to use an HTML tag. We're just going to drop in some text and display it as a list. So parent groups uses skills. And I'm going to center align that. I'm going to bold it so it's slightly different to the rest of this text. And 16 is fine. Now I do need to make sure that the width is 150, the same as the text above, okay? Don't forget we need to make this responsive. So elements need to be the same width and just center horizontally. Now I'm going to pull this up a bit so that we have 25, much like we have 25 pixels of padding here. I just want 25 here as well. And I'm going to set this to 1.3 line spacing, which is the amount of pixels between, if the word wraps or the sentence wraps, how much pixel space uh, is, it, is the, the, the space between those two rows of text. And I'm also going to pull this repeating group up a bit. So the repeating group is, let's make this nice clean 260. And the height of this group is 240. So 240 in the group, 260 on the repeating group. Let's have a look. Okay, so on the second card, we can see is not as tall as these cards. And that's because this is dropping down to the next row. And that 1.3 line height I was talking about is the spacing here. So you do need a bit of spacing, but it has presented a challenge. So what I'm going to do is just increase this card height so it's the same for all of them across. So I'm going to have to increase the repeating group size for this. I'm going to make it 280. And then I'm going to increase this to 250 which then gives me space to increase this to accept two rows. Okay, vertical is checked, I need to uncheck that. So by default, we're going to have space for two rows of text here, two lines of text by default, which means if it's only one line of text from the person's skill set, there might be a bit of a gap but that's okay. That's just the way the development works. So now all of the cards are the same height and that was more important to me than the space over here for this one row of text. Okay, so at this stage, I'm just going to micro adjust a few of the things here. I'm going to bring this down a few, bring this down a few and maybe make this image 75 by 75, center horizontally. We are still at 25 there. From the bottom here, we have 20. So I'm gonna bring this up five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that is looking amazing in my opinion, looking really, really nice. Now, how do we make it responsive? Well, first of all, we need to check to see what Bubble has done for us already. And we've already instilled some pretty good principles here. We've made sure that all of the text elements in that group are all the same width, unchecked fixed width for all of the elements except the profile image, because the profile image will always want to be a perfect circle. Um, and we've also unchecked fixed width on the group in the cell holding all the elements. Um, and we've done that to allow that group to expand and contract depending on how big the device is, the screen size that the user is using. But let's have a look. If we start to squeeze this down, let's look at the behavior. Okay, so we've changed to four cells here, and this is dropped down, which is fine. Squeezing down, squeezing down. We can see that now we've got three rows here spacing changes slightly 
It's not the end of the world. Let's keep squeezing down. No, now this is looking awful. And it's at this stage where we want to start setting what's called a minimum width. So how narrow are these elements allowed to shrink down to? And if we set a minimum width, we will force a responsive engine to reconfigure these cells. Let's try it. I'm going to bring this back out again. And I'm going to say on this parent group here, 20% of this group means that we're probably bringing it down here, which is not great. I'm going to say, why not set the minimum width at 80%? So when it gets to 80%, then possibly lob off one of these cells and drop down to the next row, just to, just to make sure that this isn't squeezed down any further. Okay, let's try again. That's perfect. Squeezing down. Okay, so what we also need to do is one thing that I forgot, and that is on the repeating group itself, we also need to set the repeating group behavior. So the current cell's minimum width is 225, okay? 225 pixels in width. One of these groups is, is 210, so this is good news. So let's set this to 200. So when the cell size, not the elements in the cell, when the cell size individually, when they get down to 200 pixels, that is the minimum amount you are allowed to squeeze down to. And it's at that stage when maybe the five cells turns into four cells or the four cells turns into three cells and then drops down to create a new row. Let's try that. Let's squeeze this down. We change to four cells. Aha, we snapped to three. Perfect. So we were at four. It got down to 200 pixel cell width and then it broke to three and it actually made these a bit wider. Going down further, when the cell gets to 200, to two cells, okay, ignore these elements here. And that's down to a large mobile phone. So this looks pretty good. So the two things to remember here is the minimum width of the cell. How narrow are you going to allow each cell to squeeze down to before dropping to the next line, before lobbing off the last cell and going from four to three or from five to four. And then also set a minimum width of this particular group itself. And that should set you off on a really nice base to work from when it comes to responsive settings in a repeating group.